So, uh, Ian, thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, the new album, Homo Eraticus, which is, is kind of Gerald Bostock has returned and, and it's kind of a, a revisit from a historical perspective. But in some of the songs, you know, I, I hear a lot of things of, of the schoolboy that has grown up, uh, and, and I see a lot of that going on that's kind of reminiscent to me of a My God or a Wind Up. Uh, and, and I'm wondering, is that, do you still have the same passion for those songs? Was that written, uh, you know, from a perspective of someone who's still looking back on that stuff with, with, with a similar mindset? Not really. I just use the uh, the alter ego of Gerald Bostock. He's a nom de plume. He's a writer's device. He has his own thoughts, his own views, and he can say things that I can't. Unless, of course, I want to get a punch on the nose down in the public bar. So um, that's what writers do. You know, we invent stuff, and we invent people who say things that aren't necessarily our thoughts. Um, so uh, may may not be <clears throat> perhaps... Um, the uh, the normal modus operandi of the writer of pop and rock music, but you know I just rather fancy that I should use the the um, the tools available to me, and so I try and stretch out a bit further than perhaps some other people do, who tend to just write about their own emotions and reactions to the um, the things in life that affect them most, which usually are a relatively small gamut of uh, possibilities. My my interest in a lot of other subjects is one that I bring to bear in writing songs, and hopefully I can do that in a an amusing and invitational way, so that even serious and daunting subjects don't become too um, difficult for people. I think it's important to try and talk about the other stuff, so I don't just write love songs for a living. Sure. So, um, Martin Barr, who, you know, has uh, left the band, and, and you, uh, according to a lot of the reports in, in 2012, you said you, you no longer wanted to do Death Row Call shows, and then he started his new project, uh, The New Day, and, uh, you know, kind of said some stuff regarding that, uh, and I, I wondered if you, if you could speak about that parting, was it cordial, or, or, or was there some sort of feelings there, or, or how did that just kind of come about? Well, Martin and I, and indeed all members of the band, past and present, you know, we're always talking about other projects and what we do. So I've been saying to Martin for many years that he ought to go and stretch his wings a little bit and do other projects, doing things um, under his own steam, because for many years I've done concerts with orchestras and string quartets that are outside the the um, strictly Jethro Tull um, line-up. But, um, of course, over the years, I have musicians that I play with, and 28 members of them, uh, to be precise. Uh, some of them, sadly, are no longer with us. Some of them are not feeling terribly well. And those that I'm playing with right at the moment are guys, most of whom I've been playing with for more than 10 years anyway, and all of whom have played as members of Jethro Tull. So, for me, it's really a question of Jethro Tull represents as a name the, the huge repertoire of music over the years that I've written and recorded and produced and engineered and and the band, if you like, that I have managed. Um, um, so it's it's a it, it, it's a big picture, and um, you can't obviously expect that that huge extended family of musicians is going to be around you forever, and it's something that. Uh, is a fact of life, you know. People, people get up and go off to do other things, and very much with my blessing. And I, I'm, I'm, I know. I mean, Martin has a whole lot of concerts this year, and I'm sure he's having a lot of fun doing things that, for him, are a completely new challenge. Because for all these years, he's been, you know, getting a, getting a tour itinerary through the post and turning up for work. Now he actually has to make plans and be involved in the creative side of putting his musical. Uh, recording and touring efforts together, and I think that's 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 something I've been urging him to do for many years. And now he's doing it. That's great. Couldn't be happier for him. And not a question of having left the band. I mean, you know, we're grown-up people. We we can go off and do some other things. It doesn't mean we'll never play together again in the future. It's just right right at the moment. You know, he's busy doing stuff, and my life goes on doing concert tours and doing what I've been doing for 46 years. 
So, uh, you know, one one of the other things, in the new album, you, you kind of have these lyrics that, that point to new technologies and, and so forth. And, and I think about, you know, growing up as a child, looking through the vinyl and, and something like Thick as a Brick that had had a newspaper as part of the album art. And that was always something uh, something that I, I think that Jeff Rotal and, and your work really celebrated, just the full package. Do you feel like in today's society that's something that is that is just kind of lost? Well, today we, we, we have to give people choice. You know, we we live in a world where there are many different ways of of uh, accessing music and entertainment, and, and we have to make sure that we do just that. And as a record producer and songwriter, that's my job is to deliver to people in a variety of formats. And uh, I think I think I'd much rather be a music fan and listener today than 30 or 40 years ago when vinyl records were the only option. These days, um, you know, you can buy your concert tickets online. You can get your audio delivered to your computer in a in either convenient MP3 files or in in large studio quality um, full audio files. And you can buy a variety of products online and have them delivered to your door if you want the Blu-ray DVD disc or. If you happen to have a record store in your neighborhood, and not many of us do these days, you may even be able to find it in your record store. But, um, you know, we we, we live in a world where possibilities are not endless, but considerably greater than they were. And and, uh, I'm very happy to be here now and celebrate music with with people all over the world at the press of a button. It suits suits me just fine. Thank you very much, Ian. All right. Take care, then. Bye-bye. Bye.